former members of the national football team who played at the 1990 World Cup in Italy have officially received keys to their houses as promised by the head of state. This was during a ceremony today in Yaoundé, co-chaired by the Minister of Sports and Physical Education and his colleague of Urban Development and Housing, who shall be having developments in this newscast. And we tell you how, how displaced chiefs from the northwest and southwest regions of the country have expressed mixed feelings over calls for them to regain their policies, why some fear that they might be targeted by secessionist armed groups, others have called for the improvement of the security situation before they can get back to their villages. Those are top stories. Good evening and thanks for joining us. You're watching the primetime newscast on STV. Cameroonian youths, especially athletes, have been challenged to emulate the 1990 Indomitable Lions, who put Cameroon on the, on the world stage of football by reaching the quarterfinals of the FIFA World Cup, the, being the first African country to do so. Sports and Physical Education Minister Narcisse Mole Kombi made the appeal today as he officially handed keys to the houses uh, promised to them by the head of state. The ceremony took place today at the Yaoundé Sports Complex. Details with John Paul 30 Summer. years down the lane, players of the 1990 team that defended the colors of the nation at the international stage have received the keys to their houses as promised by the head of state following their quarterfinal finish at the World Cup. This promise was fulfilled and keys handed them during a special ceremony in Yaoundé where the Minister of Sports and Physical Education, Professor Nassis Mwele Kombi, called on future and present generation to follow the example of these men to ensure that Cameroon is well represented at the continental and world stage. He also highlighted the fact that this team has not been completely abandoned as most of them have been called up to serve at different levels. His Excellency Roger Mila is since the year 2000 a roving ambassador of the presidency of the Republic. Other lands from your group are highly involved in coaching national teams. We have, for example, François Oumambik, Jacques Songo, Thomas Libi, Bertin Ebouele, Bonaventure Jonquet, Victor Dipakem, and many others. Others excel in the field of sport management and the representation of our country in the decision-making spheres of sport in Africa and in the world. I can easily name a few, like Joseph Antoine Bell, Eugène Ekeke, and so on. The players on their part, through Vincent Ongandi, affirmed that it is togetherness that enabled them achieve that result while thanking President Paul Bia for a promise kept. This ceremony was also an opportunity to pay tribute to those who were part of this team who have left the stage, like Benjamin Massing, Louis Paul Fede and Stephen Tato, whose family members were not left out of the picture. Two officials of the dredging unit of the Douala Ports Authority have today resumed, have today assumed their functions. They have been challenged to ameliorate the performance of the Douala Port through the provision of uh, services. Details in this report. Bay Idris and Gondi Samuel Ibwa are now the new occupants of the dredging management unit as deputy and director delegates for the dredging units of the Douala Sea ports, respectively. This opportunity has on several occasions been given to strangers, now has for them well mapped out functions. Maintaining the boats at the seaport with a depth of seven of the river system at the Douala seaport. It is equally to establish the depth of the conception of the different Cairo feet of the port. It is equally to understand this function and know the water body to the satisfaction of the Navy coming into the country. You should also maintain the dredging equipment to be in good condition and preserve the dredging environment and present your observations every trimester. The assignment is not only aimed at satisfying port authorities, but also 
owners of the Navy. Je sens le poids de la responsabilité. I feel the weight of the responsibility which is mine, as well as my collaborators. Nous nous we have to be mobilized to move along with the technical and human resources. Des ressources, notamment les ressources techniques, et surtout les ressources humaines. We now have the authority and to take charge on our own, on the standards surrounding and execute our functions based on our guide and our convenience. All this for the supreme satisfaction of the Navy coming to the country. The installation ceremony for the delegates who stands as manager and his deputy as engineer has taken place today, August 27, 2020, at the seaport headquarters in Douala. Some displaced traditional rulers from the northwest and southwest regions here in Douala have, have expressed mixed feelings over calls urging them to return back to their palaces, while some fear that they could be targeted by armed separatists. Others complain that not much has been done to ameliorate the security situation in the restive regions. We have details with, with Josephine Binzi. The resolutions of 19 August conclave meeting between traditional authorities and the Minister of Territorial Administration upon high instructions of the Head of State, President Spobia, to contribute to the peace building process by returning to their various chiefdoms is far from reality. Paul Atanganji had as objectives to convince the chiefs to return to their villages following the upcoming regional elections. This is because a traditional authority is powerless when they are far from home. These traditional rulers are indeed not seeking for money from the government, says a source who wants to remain anonymous. Neither are they asking for a 24 hours military surveillance over their homes, but are now asking government to put an end to the war which has torn the two English-speaking regions apart. Following a light survey done by La Nouvelle Expression today, August 27, 2020, to access the number of chiefs who want to return to their palaces, it was discovered that most funds and their relatives who desire to return and resume duties in their area of control are seen as allies with the state against their secessionist vision. Installation ceremonies in the northwest and southwest regions for the past three years have been peculiar with the absence of most traditional authorities who are a direct link between the people and government. Though government has recently launched its reconstruction scheme in the two war torn zones, traditional authorities are not convinced the government has taken the appropriate measures to secure their safety as they are being labeled by, by some as traitors, thus, Many who chose to return anonymous fear to lose their lives, though they desire to return to their palaces. Some victims of the August 21 floods at the Valley Besenge neighborhood here in Douala lament that they have not received the presidential assistance. They are blaming the situation on poor communication. The, a, a native spoke to our reporter John Paul Sama in this report. The aid offered by the head of state to persons affected by the last flood in the city of Douala is yet to be received by some of the affected at the Besenge neighborhood here in the Douala 1 municipality. I can't say we haven't all gotten because some individuals here got something. But we who are the elites of the neighborhood, like the chief of the block, we're not up to date when the registration was being done. Very little sensitization was done. Going by some sources, a gendarmerie officer came here. He asked for people's names, but a good number of locals here didn't want to give it because they thought it was a list to register them so their houses can be destroyed later on. A state of affairs which brings into question the method used to identify persons affected by disasters to benefit from government aid in the country.
a feeling expressed by some flood victims in Bonatone who have decried what they say is perceived discrimination in the sharing of the presidential assistance. They are calling on authorities to come to their aid. Details in this report. <coughs> Some inhabitants of the Bonatone neighborhood in the Dualawan municipality who were victims of last week's flood have expressed dissatisfaction to the manner in which the presidential assistance was distributed by the Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Atanganji. Cela, nous avons reçu notre administrateur euh, d'arrondissement qui est le maire, qui est venu voir les sinistrés de sa circonscription. Mais au jour d'aujourd'hui, la population recensée par le chef de Bonatone n'ont rien eu. Ils n'ont eu droit à rien du tout. Par contre, tous les autres de Douala premier. Surprise parce que depuis hier, nous avons appris qu'on est en train de partager les dons à ceux de Bonacroix, moi, Bessinger. Nous, ici à Bonatone, nous n'avons pas eu. Il y a des gens qui ont eu des matelas. Euh, des couvertures, à manger aussi, des seaux. Nous aussi, nous sommes surpris depuis hier. Nous sommes allés là-bas à la salle des fêtes. C'était déjà fermé. On n'a rien eu. The sea, this by being registered under those hardly hid by the flood, they were shocked not to be among the beneficiaries. Bon Antoine a mis une commission de recensement pour les sinistrés. Il a reçu une liste depuis lundi. Mais à la grande surprise, devant les médias, on a vu que les autres quartiers de Douala qui ont été des sinistrés ont reçu des dons du chef de l'État et Bonantone a été laissé. Nous ne savons pas ce que Bonantone a fait à l'administration afin que nous puissions subir cela. Par contre, on sait que c'est le chef de l'État, le père de la nation, qui a fait ce don pour tout le peuple sinistré. Three days after the heavy flood rendered some neighborhood practically impassable and recorded enormous material damages, Minister Paul Atanganji visited the inundated areas and distributed the presidential aid to victims of the flood. But unfortunately, many are still to receive the gifts. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to hit Cameroon's economy. Cameroonians have been urged to consume locally made products in a bid to curb mass imports of commodities which could be manufactured in the country. But traders in the economic capital are decrying the scarcity of locally grown rice. Ladonet only was at the Mbopi market and brings this special report for the news. Some inhabitants in the city of Douala, economic capital of Cameroon, seem to be oblivious to the existence of rice made in Cameroon. The population cannot differentiate between the rice made in Cameroon and the rice imported. That is because majority of the products consumed are imported. It's true we have heard about rice made in Cameroon, but we don't see it in the market. There's no rice made in Cameroon in the market. We eat only imported rice. Not yet. All I consume is rice imported from Thailand, Vietnam. That's all we find in the market. I don't even know about it. It's what mark? I don't even know the mark or name. On meeting some traders at the Mbopi market in the Douala One municipality, they attest the scarcity of rice made in Cameroon is as a result of its high price. The rice from Dop, people keep asking, but we don't have. It's too expensive. A rice of 10,500 or 11,000, they will sell it at 12,000, so you can sell for how much? For over two times, I worked with suppliers of rice made in Cameroon. But after the first time when the rice got finished, I couldn't find the supplier. He came periodically. And the next time I saw him, he said the producers had a difficulty drying the rice. It's true that it's difficult to sell rice made in Cameroon. This is because it's of good quality, but very expensive. More expensive than other rice. So 
there is an unfair competition in which other countries like Asia produce in large scale and export, giving them an upper hand than us. And we are in a context where the purchasing power of Cameroonians keep decreasing by the day. It makes it in such a way that people rush towards cheaper goods. In a television magazine, Agri Mac, on Spectrum Television, the Minister of Agriculture and Urban Development recognizes that local rice production does not meet demand. Annual production is estimated at 105,000 tons for an estimated annual requirement of over 407,000 tons. Consequently, the state has opted for importation. After the years, disons 80 to 85, où la production nationale de riz permettait de couvrir 80% des besoins. Il y a eu la crise. After the 80s up to 85, where the national production of rice could cover over 80% of Cameroon's needs, we experienced a world crisis in 87. The rice sector was slightly abandoned to individuals, and agro-industrial companies which produced rice could not meet up with the new system. It lasted up till 2008, where the state opted for massive exoneration with aim to protect consumption and help the less privileged Cameroonians in assessing food. After that, we didn't put a good strategy for production, and this led to the fact that for some years now, over 10 years, if I may say, our commercial balance has been negatively affected by importation of rice. Today, we import rice, wheat, and fish, which negatively impacts Cameroon's commercial balance. Impact negatively the balance commercial Cameroonese. The minister further affirms that the government is working to reverse the trend through strengthening of local production by joining the production of irrigated rice. The cultivation of rain felt rice, which can be done everywhere in Cameroon. A book on President Paul Bia as the architect of Cameroon's democracy has been launched in Douala. The publication of Ondondo Patrick Mario seeks to analyze the country's democratic drive in the midst of multiple challenges. Christel Asexuele with the details. I cannot continue to, to say things. Orality is not the best way to construct the story, yes, the memory. What better way of keeping the memories of the Republic of Cameroon and the reign of its head of state, His Excellency Paul Bia, if not through documenting his works in a book? This book entitled the Paul Bia Architect of Democracy faced to security problem, economic problem, and reforms of the state is coming to give the solution of problem what Cameroonians face. This book, prefaced by Samuel Moth and edited by St. Paul, is a 28-chapter book that recounts the history of Cameroon from the colonial master's period. Paul Beer, architect of the Cameroonian democracy, is the title of the book by the writer, essayist, actor and observer of the political scene, His Majesty Ondondo Patrick Marius. This book is coming out to protect our democracy, to protect our liberty, to protect our peace and our unity. This book was launched today, August 27, 2020, at the Salle de Fête in Aquadouala and was attended by the Douala City Mayor, the former government delegate to the Douala City Council, political actors, as well as other administrative authorities who came to support as well as get a signed copy of this book. Uh, out of the country, U.S. President Donald Trump's re-election campaign has made law and order a central theme of this week's Republican National Convention, focusing attention on incidents of violence and vandalism that have accompanied widespread protests in the past weeks. We have details with the VOA. 
The Republican National Convention featured a wealthy white couple photographed outside their St. Louis home pointing guns at Black Lives Matter protesters marching through their gated community in June. Not a single person in the out of control mob you saw at our house was charged with a crime. But you know who was? We were. They've actually charged us with felonies for daring to defend our home. Prosecutors charged the couple with unlawful use of a weapon. The event underscored the Trump campaign's assertion that racial justice protests are spreading and a growing threat to public safety. Just this week, violent protests broke out in Kenosha, Wisconsin, after a white police officer shot a black man near his children on Sunday. Demonstrators looted and set fire to downtown businesses. Early Wednesday, three people were shot, two fatally. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden has called for police reforms to end what he says is systematic racism. He has also denounced violent protests and opposed efforts to defund police programs. Nevertheless, speakers at the Republican convention have accused Biden and his party of siding with violent radicals and against police to ensure African-American support. They will defund, dismantle and destroy America's law enforcement. When you are in trouble and need police, don't count on the Democrats. Law and order has long been a winning issue for Republicans. Richard Nixon won the 1968 election in part by promising to protect public safety as racial and anti-Vietnam protests erupted across the country. However, liberals and Democrats say that Trump, as the sitting president, cannot escape responsibility for current tensions. He's the incumbent. So if there's chaos going on right now, he's to blame for it. He's not the one who's going to solve it. Trump has also been criticized for his use of law enforcement. In June, federal officials used pepper spray to forcefully clear peaceful protesters outside the White House. Shortly afterward, Trump emerged from the White House and walked to a church across the street to pose for pictures with a Bible. The president also sent federal forces into other U.S. cities where police have clashed with protesters. Analyst Matt Grossman says Trump's renewed emphasis on law and order overshadows his efforts to reach out to African Americans by touting his economic measures and criminal justice reform. It really is a, a big switch here to now go back to your traditional uh, tough on crime, throw away the key kind of position. While Democrats say Trump's law and order emphasis is an attempt to shift focus away from his administration's failure to contain the coronavirus pandemic, supporters argue it reflects growing public concern over racial unrest in the country. Brian Patton, VOA News, Washington. And that does it for the primetime newscast on STV. Thank you very much for watching. From the entire team in Douala, good night. Bye-bye.